backcountry Colorado. Hiking, backpacking. I did a lot of marathons. I was convinced to do some ultras. Climbing, and I do filming and photography. I just like the ultras because I love the community. I just think that everybody is so nice, whether they're the first place finishers or, you know, us that kind of mosey along. My name is Abigail Wise, and I'm a senior editor at The Mountain Project. The Mountain Project is a proud media sponsor of Flash Foxy's Women Climbing Festival, so we'll be here in Bishop, California, covering the fest all weekend long. The Women's Climbing Festival is hosted by Flash Foxy, which is a multimedia online platform that was created to celebrate women climbing with women and to be a place where women can come to feel inspired by and connected to other lady climbers. You can find Flash Foxy on Instagram, which is where they were originally founded at Flash Foxy. This is the second annual Women's Climbing Festival. Right now, I believe there are 300 women here and the event sold out in one minute. There are about 800 on the wait list. So this is definitely an in-demand event. The point of the Women's Climbing Festival is to bring women together to climb, take some clinics, learn some new skills, build confidence, meet new people, grow their community of other female climbers and just get psyched. So tell me your name and where you're from. Nicole Armstrong, Boise, Idaho. And how'd you get out here to Bishop? I drove about nine hours from Boise down here. Nice. And is this your first year out? Yeah. I found out about it two days before the event registration. You were lucky. (laughs) I was super lucky. Didn't realize how lucky I was until after registration sold out in five minutes. What made you want to come? I just got into climbing and I want to find like a rad group of women to actually climb with because it's a very male dominated sport. I'm in a very male dominated industry in electrical engineering. So like I just need cool women to hang out with. Are you signed up for any clinics or anything? Signed up for the Rock Climbing 101 out in the gorge. What's that one? It's the top rope, every how to tie knots and belay and everything to be climbing outside safely so that I have the base knowledge. So whenever I go out with my friends that do know everything, that I have the knowledge too and, and not just the noob. <laughs> yeah, totally. So is that what you hope to walk away with most? That and to get to know the area and meet some new people. So just basically the whole entire experience is what I hope to walk away with. And it's definitely been an experience so far. I'm Lindsay Ham, and I'm from Durango, Colorado. Sweet. Did you fly out? I did. Usually I would drive, but uh, I flew and rented an awesome small car <laughs> that I slept in the trunk the other day. <laughs> so it was awesome. <laughs> Oh, too strong start. Um, So tell me what you are here to do. Um, I am going to be guiding for the Trad Climbing Clinic with Kate Rutherford. We're going to be in the buttermilks at the Wendy Wall. So I'm pretty stoked about that. It's pretty much an intro to intermediate course. So excited to spend some time with these ladies and get them all ready for their trad time out in the mountains, you know, so. Hell yeah. So what kind of skills are you going to be teaching and showing the women? Um, anchor building, most likely knots, um, placement of gear, <laughs> movement, and just efficiency. If they want to, maybe we might have like some more uh, advanced individuals that maybe are more into multi-pitch. And I'd love to take them aside and teach them some you know, efficient ways to do things and what's in my bag, what's on my harness type of things. And, um, you know, knowing your gear and understanding what, um, you know, what you should pack and leave at home. You see you're, you're packing correctly. Um, and just like being, you know, comfortable and in a different area, you know, this is probably a little bit out of people's comfort zones and trying to get them comfortable and understand everything about traditional climbing in the mountains. So it's pretty stoked. (laughs) Nice. That's super important. Yeah. What do you hope that people walk away with knowing the most from your, your lessons? Just safety and being confident too. I think when you are climbing, it's, it's not, a roller coaster out there, you know, these things happen out there. And if you can be proficient and safe and, you know, understanding what every placement, every movement, every, you know, everything means something when you're 
your trad climbing and climbing in general. So staying safe and having fun at the end of the day and actually sending some of those routes that you've been wanting to send and maybe learning more about route finding. That's a huge part of knowing where the crag is. Um, you know, so I, I want to like really teach that and implant that in people's brains. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Anything you want to add? Um, I love Bishop and I want to move here. So Gary Newmeyer, my boyfriend, I'm, I want to move here. I want to move here. <laughs> my name is Carrie D. Victoria Michael. I'm kind of based at Smith Rock in Oregon, but I am living out of my van. So home is where I'm parked, I guess. <laughs> nice. So do you work as a guide then? I do work as a guide at Smith. I work as a guide with uh, Chalkstone Climbing Guides. Cool. Um, and what are you going to teach and guide out here? Yeah, I'll be guiding for the uh, clinic with Chelsea Rude it's on uh, movement for sport climbing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What uh, kind of stuff are you like teaching and showing? And yeah, this is for women that are uh, that have been leading sport climbing for a bit and they want to get more technique down and more tips on movement, moving through cruxes. Um, and I think Chelsea Rood is uh, the perfect athlete to be teaching that. I feel very lucky to work alongside her. So. Okay. so, what are your names and where are you from? I'm Giselle Fernandez and I'm from Oxnard, California. I'm Isabel Moriarty and I'm from the Bay Area, California. Cool. Is this your first year at the Women's Climbing Fest? No, it's our second year, both yeah. of us. Yeah, we actually met last year at this festival. Yeah, you did. And we've kept in touch since then. Yeah, we've climbed together a couple times since then. Really? Yeah. That's which, so awesome. Yeah, which is why we're really stoked about this. We yeah. want to meet more people. And Yeah, it was just such a great experience last year. Like, everyone we talked to, everyone we met was super friendly, super welcoming, so excited to be back. Cool. Did you take any clinics last year? Uh, yeah, I did the intro to trad clinic. I did the yoga for climbers. How about this year? I know. Uh, we're actually both doing the efficient sport climbing yeah. clinic. Nice. What do you hope to take away from that? Um, I'd like to gain more confidence in my outdoor sport climbing abilities. Um, kind of, you know, I know I'll never climb as hard as I do in the gym outdoors, but I want to close that gap a little bit and see what I can learn tomorrow. Just keep an open mind. Yeah, same. I have to say the same thing. Nice. Do you feel like there's a huge need for a women-specific event like this? Um, I think... I don't know if it's necessarily a need, but it's definitely, like, a huge plus, like, a huge benefit. Because other than that, like, before coming to this festival last year, I was in a very male-dominated climbing world. And it really opened up my mind about not only how many girl climbers there are, but what they can do. So I've actually improved in climbing just because of my mindset after the climbing festival. Yeah, I definitely think I've taken away a different mindset. Like, I still climb with a lot of guys, but over the last year, I've gotten a lot more confident and you know I feel like I can keep up with the boys and there's no reason why I should climb lower grades than they do so this is a really awesome view you guys are getting me psyched just looking outside right now <laughs> for those of you who don't know me my name is Shelma and I'm the founder of Flashbox and the women's and I just want to thank you all for being here this is our second year last year we had about 200 people this year we have 300 we sold out in a minute there's actually 805 people on the wait list. So I am so happy that you're all here and I'm really excited to spend the weekend with you. And I just want to thank you for being here because it doesn't really matter what I plan if you're not here and you're not psyched and you're not stoked to meet all these other women and come together and climb. So it just wouldn't really be the same thing if you weren't here. So I just really want to thank you first. Tell me your name and where you're from. Hi, my name's Erica Bruno. I'm from the Bay Area right now. And so. how long have you been climbing for? I've been climbing consistently for about a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Cool. What do you like most about it? There are a lot of things I like about it. I guess the connection you have with nature and the ability to, to be in the present. Cool. Tell me a little bit about your climbing community and compared to this climbing community here at the Women's Climbing Fest. 
I've been in a couple of different climbing communities. The one where I'm at right now is really great, super supportive. A lot of strong climbers um, and that are really inspiring, actually, of all different ages. I lived in another community overseas. And even though people were really, really great, I noticed where I was living previously, um, even though there were female climbers, the majority of the strong climbers were men. And being at a festival like this where there are all females and a lot of really strong female climbers really shows that, I guess, that the world is changing with, within that of climbing. And, and also with all the, I mean, with Margot and everything that's happened in the past few days, I guess it's just really inspiring to, to see just a bunch of strong women doing what they love. And, and even actually last night when we were watching some of the slideshows that were presented here at the festival, how Colette and, and Dela participated on that trip, but they had a girl's trip going out to Brazil and they said, okay, we're here without our boyfriends. We're just doing our thing. And it just shows, yeah, women women can climb just as hard as men. And it's it's great. Do you think there's a different dynamic climbing with all women versus mixed or or just men? I actually haven't had the chance to climb with only women. And so... If you cut back to me later, later today after the clinics, I could probably better answer that question because it's either been me and all guys or me and maybe one or two other chicks and mostly all guys. And yeah, uh, I don't I don't really know, but I'm going to assume it's going to be because the energy that that's being, I guess, like shared, I guess, at this um, at this festival is just I don't really have the word to describe it, but it feels like home. So I am here with Shelma, who is the founder of Flash Foxy and the Women's Climbing Festival. Thanks for chatting with us, Shelma. Yeah, thanks for coming out. So tell me a little bit about your background. How'd you get into climbing? Well, actually, it's actually a funny story. I grew up surfing and swimming and playing water polo and snowboarding, and I hurt my shoulder and I kept having these recurring dislocations and I had to get shoulder reconstruction surgery. And when I had that, my doctor told me I couldn't do anything where I fall on my shoulder for at least two years or I could re-injure my shoulder. And at the time I was snowboarding and downhill mountain biking. So it's kind of out of the picture. And a girlfriend of mine actually suggested climbing at the gym. She was like, hey, if you're on a top rope, if you fall, you're only going to fall one inch of rope stretch. So you'll be fine. And she took me and I was hooked. I loved the movement of it, how low impact it was, the problem solving part of it, and kind of that you could just track your own progress. Like it didn't really matter how hard you climbed. You could still always see the improvements and see those ways that you were improving your climbing, whether by grade or moves. I thought that was really awesome. And I, But then I went to grad school. I was really busy and I didn't really get back into climbing until I moved to New York. I met a friend who took me trad climbing in the gunks and I loved it. And uh, that was, I think, my second time going outside, my first time on ropes. And then I couldn't stop. <laughs> so how did that inspire you to start Flash Foxy? I got really into climbing. And at that time, which is probably about three and a half years ago, there just weren't as many strong women climbing in New York. There's so many strong women in New York now. You just go to the gym and they're just crushing it everywhere. But at the time, there really wasn't. And I met a couple of my girlfriends at the gym through mutual friends. And they were climbing hard. They were psyched. They wanted to go out and push themselves, tried climbing. It really changed my relationship with climbing. Having that kind of support and that camaraderie really deepened my relationship and commitment to climbing. And so I started an Instagram to just post pictures of me and my girlfriend, psyched to be out climbing together and... I think there just was a desire for something like that. So we kept getting more and more followers, thousands and thousands of followers. And next thing you know, we had this huge following. Kept getting these messages from all these women who would say things like, I wish I had a group of women to, women to climb with. I wish that I uh, had someone other than my boyfriend to climb with. My boyfriend and his friends all climb harder than me and I feel bad asking them to go on easier things with me. I feel intimidated. I don't really know how to break into outdoor climbing. I wish I knew some people I'd feel comfortable going with. I looked around and there really wasn't any events that kind of catered to the women who might be looking for a safe space to try climbing or try new things within climbing. And though I had never been to a climbing festival before, I just thought, well... I've been on trips with 10 women. It's been always a blast. Maybe we'll just do something in the desert. It'll be like 30 or 40 women. It'll be fun. 
And when we announced it, we ended up with like 300 people who wanted to go on our Facebook event and just realizing there was this huge demand and realizing it was going to be a lot more work than I thought, but also so much more gratifying. So yeah, last year, 2016 was our first year in Bishop and it was a three-day festival. We had about 200 women out here and it was a blast. Awesome. So now we are on round two. Um, are there any differences between last year and this year that you've noticed so far? I mean, we have more women this year. We have we have 300 women. I think there's a huge demand for the festival. We sold out in probably about a minute. We have 800 women on the wait list. And I think because there's such a high demand, everyone who wants to be here really wants to be here. And they're super psyched. So the energy level is just really special. Um, we're all kind of almost giddy or, or high or drunk or something on the energy of being together here. You know, my relationships with my local partners are deeper and, and more broad this year, which is really exciting. I'm working with the Chamber of Commerce as well as a bunch of small businesses in town. I have really great land manager contacts. So um, it's just been a really fun time to be here and, and continue to grow together. Cool. So I know that you do do a lot of work with the local businesses here in Bishop. Can you talk a little bit about that, how you work together with them and why you feel that's important? And I think it's important because I don't live here. This isn't my town. And I think it's rude to come to somebody else's town and decide to do something there and not engage them and decide it's something that they need or want without even asking. And so I think it's really important to grow our, to grow our festival in partnership with our local, the local businesses here. I think it makes it a richer experience. Bishop is a traditional ranch town that's really shifting in the demographic as climbing becomes bigger and it becomes a huge part of this, the town here. And I think it's, so it's been really great to use this as an opportunity to also even almost build a bridge in some instances it just works better. It works better if you're doing it with people in town. And it's nice to be able to do things locally. Like I get all my printing done locally on Main Street at Alex Printing. To give you one example, it's run by Alex and Debbie, husband and wife duo. They're always really excited to work with us. There's always candy in our box of printing. I can just drop by there and it's easy. I don't have to be trying to do something online and have it shipped and will it be here in time? And to have that easy relationship with somebody local that it's great. And that's kind of the way it is with all the partners that we work with. So I'm really excited that last year we were able to spend 75% of our budget locally in town. And we were able to raise $1,200 with the access fund. And the access fund was able to earmark that money specifically for projects in Bishop. So all the money that we raised for stewardship is coming right back into the rock climbing here, which is really cool. Yeah, that's super awesome. Because this is the Women's Climbing Fest, can we talk a little bit about uh, gender and climbing? I can't speak for all women, of course. I can only speak for my own personal experience. And there are these social norms about the way we're supposed to act and the way we're supposed to act in front of mixed company of men and women or of any gender. There are social pressures. So I think what's interesting is when we talk about women and climbing there's this assumption that we're always talking about how men need to change. And of course, there are things that men could be doing differently. But I think we're all complicit in these gender norms and these social norms and pressures that cause us to act in certain ways, right? For example, for me, when I go bolder with a bunch of guys, I feel a social pressure to man up. I mean, it's even in the word to man up, you know, and and that, like, I feel like I have something to prove and I have to show them that I'm good enough to be here and that I deserve to be here. And I think that that is a social pressure that's been kind of incorporated into a lot of different parts of women's lives, whether it's at work or, you know, even in the house or in climbing or in sports. And so I found that when I was climbing with a bunch of women, that pressure that I had felt before was released so I think it creates a different environment for us to explore climbing in a different way. When I climb with women, maybe the way that we define success or partnership or challenges might be different than if I was in a male and female partnership dynamic. 
And for me, what I really hope with these women's spaces is that it's going to allow us to have an environment where we can think and challenge what is normal to climbing and bring that into climbing overall so that climbing represents the changing demographic of climbing more equally, if that makes sense. Totally. That's awesome. For the listeners who were not able to attend this year, how can they get involved with the either the Women's Climbing Festival next year or um, Flash Foxy? I think they can definitely keep an eye out for the tickets going on sale. I know that it's gone by really quick and we were not able to fill demand, but I think we're going to be trying to look into being able to expand this festival as well as maybe hopefully do some additional ones to accommodate the demand. And so I hope that there will be more opportunities to join in. And I think we're going to hopefully want be wanting to maybe try to do more events in partnership with gyms if that's possible. So I think just to keep your eyes peeled for new things. If you're psyched and you want to do something locally, you should just go and do it yourself too because I think there's a lot of support everywhere and women are looking for something everywhere. Awesome. Thanks. Are you, The stuff that you're doing with, Julie, that your video stuff, or mm-hmm. is that all like top secret right now? It isn't. Can you tell me mm-hmm. a little bit about your upcoming project? So I'm pretty excited to be working on a new project separate from Flash Foxy and the Women's Climbing Festival. I am working with three other women who are tied to the outdoor community and industry on a new production company to be making media about climbing and about the outdoors. And I think what we're hoping to accomplish is not to just make media about women, but to kind of bring a woman's perspective. I don't know what the stats are for outdoor media, but I know that when the New York Times did an investigative piece about directors in Hollywood, I think it was something like 1% of directors are female. What that says is that the stories you're getting, they're from the male perspective almost all the time. And I think... I don't know what the percentage is for the outdoor media, but I think it's similar. I think the majority of creatives, of directors, of filmmakers are men. And so I think what we are hoping to offer is just a little bit of a different perspective. It's not that it's it's better than the perspectives that exist. It's just going to be different. When you get four women looking at something, we might notice something different. We might approach it in a different way. And so we're kind of excited to experiment with that. And the other part of it is we hope to kind of create an incubator where like mentorship is possible, where women who might have trouble finding places to gain experience can come and learn, get mentored and grow and gain skills. So I think that would be really exciting as well. Yeah, me too. Do you guys know when you're launching officially yet? I think it's going to be the spring, but uh, we're all enmeshed in a bunch of projects. So, but hopefully, I think we're really excited to be working together and see like what kind of stories we can come up with. Awesome. Anything you want to add? I I mean, I think just, I'm pretty blown away by the women at the festival. And I just want to take a moment to thank them because it's just, it doesn't really matter how great of a shell that I make of this festival. If the women who are here aren't psyched and excited and happy and open and open to trying new things and open to meeting new people. And so it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't be what it is if they weren't here and they weren't so generous with being excited. So I think, um, I'm just really thankful for that and to all my partners and my sponsors. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much, Shalma. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Was there any kind of piece that you really liked? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that the festival was in Climbing Magazine. Cool. Um, any anything else? Any other videos or like stories that really struck you? I thought that um, photograph of Margot Hayes right she after she did that. <laughs> yeah. Like yep. she was just so ecstatic. It's like so much was like in that photo. You mm-hmm. just feel it with her. And it was right. Such a perfect photo to mm-hmm. be like the advertisement of her climbing. And it wasn't of her climbing. And right. I thought that was actually. Quite For sure. And I think that's like a really good thing to be thinking about is especially with more women coming up in the in media, we're not always interested in like the hardest send and like bone crushing everything. We're really interested in, well, everybody's interested in this, but women do a really good job. I think of focusing on the human aspect, on the emotional aspect, 
um, and what it means to send the route other than like, okay, now I'm the strongest climber in the world. Um, and I think that's what that photo really did for people. You see her just like, I can't effing believe I just did this and she's proud and she's psyched. Um, and what's interesting about that photo is that the guy who took that had also climbed the route that day. And it's interesting to me that like nobody was, it's Maddie Hong, nobody was talking about the fact that he sent the route. And then there was also a separate photographer on the rope shooting Margot. And so that's kind of something we can talk about later down the line, but just um, how it kind of works with when you have multiple photographers, when you're putting out um, media on social media, on putting out photos on social media, them getting picked up. Um, and I, I call it swooping, where someone swoops your image or they, they swoop that moment. Um, so we can kind of talk about that later. We'll talk about ethics. Yeah, <laughs> some ethics. And, 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 you know, you'll see, like, out at the Buttermilks, you know, especially there's so many photographers all the time and people shooting video and, and how it kind of works to communicate with people um, about, you know, getting what you need either out of a climber or a spotter or just some random dude that's standing there spraying beta. Um, so we can talk about that later. So. I'm Michelle. Victoria. Serena. And did you have fun? A ton of fun, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, what were some of your favorite parts? Um, honestly, just the climbing, because I didn't sign up for any of the workshops. So like being able to climb when the rocks are just tons of other chicks is pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, just the atmosphere. I like it. Yeah, so I went to a yoga um, workshop. I really like that. It help, It will help with my uh, uh, injury. What's your injury? Uh, rotator cuff strain. Oh, no. Yeah, so really no. like it. And I really like the um, the films last night. Oh, yeah. yeah, they were badass. <laughs> awesome. So do you guys think you'll be back next year? Yeah. Most likely. Yeah, hopefully. I don't see why not. So, <laughs> um, And why should anyone else come? Um... I'm going to have to say the atmosphere. I mean, like, everyone's, like, so willing to, like, help you. And there's tons of people who, like, are really psyched about climbing. It's, like, the atmosphere you want to be in as opposed to, like, I don't know. Like, if you're trying to climb with someone who's, like, really good or, like, really a veteran for the sport, but you need other people to, like, also be newbies with you, it's a great place to be, I think. So what was the most memorable... Oh, you don't. You don't have. It's okay. It was. What was your? Um, what was the most memorable? Memorable part of the festival? Uh, probably just the, the climbs. I think we're really well organized. The the crowd is really friendly. Everybody is very friendly. Cool. So yeah. How about for you? I think it was trying to boulder for the first time. Nice. <laughs> How did that go? It went well. Yeah. <laughs> Where was it? Where were you? Um, the buttermilk. The buttermilk. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful up there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What did it feel like? Were you nervous? No, it was fine. It wasn't that high. <laughs> so. Awesome. Yeah. Did you send it? What? You did get. Yeah, you got that. The she's first time you went. Yeah, she sent it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. How about you? Um, I think after this experience, I kind of want to climb with women more <laughs> and not with my fiance. How <laughs> <laughs> do you normally climb with? Yeah. And what do you like about climbing with women? I like that it's more, I feel like it's more of a camaraderie and you feel like you can actually complete, like you can actually work things together. It's not just like, oh, he sent that. I, I'm going to give up. <laughs> awesome. You know. Awesome. What was the most memorable part for you? Um, it's just nice being around a bunch of women. Like, even in, like, the film festival last night, like, the crowd was, like, really happy about, like, all the films. And it's, like, everyone's reacting a lot. And, yeah, climbing with women is just amazing. Like she said, like, you, like, try something and you climb it with, like, your boyfriend or something. And he just does it in a completely different way. And you're like, I can't do it that way. But when you're climbing with a bunch of women, you, like, find all these different different beta and different ways to do stuff and then it gives you hope that you can do it so it's just it's so nice <laughs> cool well I'm glad you guys had fun yeah. um, will you be back next year absolutely yeah. we're gonna try yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. have more spots open that's what I was telling her <laughs> yeah cool well thank you guys so much thank you. Yeah. cool so did you guys have fun oh we had a blast Awesome time. Definitely exceeded my expectations again. <laughs> cool. And this was round two for both of you. Yeah. Correct. Um, so what was the most memorable part of this year? 
Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> definitely at our workshop, we did the um, efficient sport climbing with Chelsea Rood. And not only, like, Chelsea was super awesome, but everyone in our group was amazing. And we all connected pretty well. Yeah. So we got a lot more new friends. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think everyone was super supportive during our clinic, and we all had a great time. We just kept each other psyched, so it was great. Cool. Yeah, and on top of that, I feel like we all learned a lot from each other and from Chelsea. So. What's the, the biggest thing that you're going to take away? Um, definitely, I have a lot of pointers on what to work on for my climbing. And um, just also, like just like last time, the stoke of it all, it's like going to help me with my confidence in climbing. So I'm really yeah. excited about that. That's great. How about you? Anything major you're going to take away? Um, from the clinic, I definitely will, you know, be more mindful of my footwork. And then yeah. also, if I want to climb harder grades, I learned that it's okay to just take baby steps. You don't have to really throw yourself into it. And just like Giselle said, I definitely gained some new friendships, and I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm.